Little wins, right? Yep. Like, I did, and there's Tom. Secure play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So, this is uh, part three of our Inductrix Tiny Whoop build. And in this part, we're basically going to be putting on this new replacement flight controller. It's a B core board and it has clean flight on it. I think you can load beta flight as well if you want to do that. But this makes it more like the regular racing quadcopters where you can fly in acro mode and do stunts and things. And so it's more compatible with that. Uh, we'll also be changing this cable here for the camera which keeps breaking. It's a splitter cable and uh, soldering directly to the board. That's a mod you may not want to do but you may want to see it too so stay tuned. So this is the B core board and uh, we got this from Banggood but you can probably also purchase them in other places. There's other versions also that you can use like the DSM2 version that would work with a spectrum radio and I think there's also maybe some Futaba types but you can find them on the internet on Banggood and other places. Now ours came with clean flight already installed on it so we'll be uh, programming that later on so stay tuned for that. So this is the spectrum version of the B core board we're not going to be using it in this video but I just thought I'd show what it looked like because it is an option. If you have a spectrum radio and there's the other side. Okay, we're going to be removing the wires off the bottom of the board first. There we go. So I'm prying the old board off the rack on heli frame. It's held on by some tape. Okay, we got that off and we can take out the connector. So there's the old board and we want to uh, desolder this. Okay, we're going to use a soldering iron just to desolder these two pins so we can get this cable to use. I think you're coming. Yeah, I am. And it's off. So now we're going to go ahead and solder the uh, battery wires right here on VCC and ground. Red goes on VCC and uh, then there's a white wire for ground. So I'm just going to tin these wires. That one's a little long so I'm going to have to trim it down. We don't have any shorts. And so where is this VCC and ground? The black one goes on the ground, the white one goes on the VCC. And these poke through from the side with the motor plugs sticking up. So we want to put it in through here. Okay. So I've got the VCC on. Okay. And now for the ground. Hold on, it's being finicky, sorry, in here. Okay, so the battery cable is soldered on now. We need to remove this piece of double sided uh, foam right here from the Raycon Heli frame. So I'm just peeling it back. I got a exacto blade in here backwards like that. And now I think I can grab a hold of it and peel it off. So it looks like we just need enough to cover that little square piece in the middle. So I'll cut about a third of that strip off. So about that size right there ought to do it. Okay, so the strip goes diagonally across the board. We'll put it on the board first. So just kind of center it and get it on a diagonal. Okay, notice that these three holes are the front of the Raycon Heli frame, but whatever frame you got, just make sure you're going towards the front with this arrow. Taking the cover off the tape, and we'll just see if we can get it stuck on there about in the middle. I'm just trying to tip it so it looks level. Okay, so now we can plug in the motors. Now these motors on mine were in the Inductrix uh, placements. In other words, the Inductrix motors are placed different than what this uh, B-Core board really likes. But we can take care of that. Even though the motors will be in the wrong spots, we can override that in the CLI in the Clean Flight Configurator. So I'm just plugging each motor into the socket that is closest to it. And there we go. So all the motors are in the way they should be. 
However, they'd be spinning wrong if we don't override the motor position in clean flight. So we'll do that later. So next we want to connect our camera power up and we have eliminated this Y splitter that was uh, giving me a lot of trouble breaking connections. So we're going to have to solder it straight on, but we decided instead we'd we use one of these jumpers so that we can turn the camera off if we want to and cut the voltage to the camera. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire so we can proceed on that. I'm just going to chop off almost all of it. There we go. And we got our two wires to this jumper right here. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so to get ready to put the jumper into the cover, I just made two holes with a pin right there for the jumper to go through. And it's going to go through from the inside after we solder the wires on. So the jumper will go right through those two holes like that. And then the jumper will actually jump these two pins when we're ready to turn the camera on. All right, as I said, you don't need to do this mod. This is just something we're doing to eliminate that Y splitter. Adding the wires to the jumper. One of them at first right now. Yeah. Right. Soldering the red wire from the camera to the jumper now. Soldering the ground from the camera to the board ground. Soldering the yellow wire to the voltage. Crazy looking soldering iron, I know, with a big screw sticking out, but that's what we got. It just shows you can do it with any kind of soldering iron. Okay, so now we're just pushing the jumper through the cover, hopefully, where the two holes were. There we go. And then we're going to glue it in place with some CA. Okay, a drop of CA to hold the plug in place. Okay, now we're going to put the jumper on the pins to enable or energize the camera. There we go. Okay, it's on there now. And we're going to do a test. Smoke test. Oh, okay, it works. Okay, now we're going to put a little string on the jumper so that it's easy to find if it falls off. Yeah, it's going to hold. Okay, I got a little tip from Wild Corey, who posted underneath my other Inductrix video, and he suggested uh, using the standoffs from the original Blade Inductrix to hold down the Craze Pony canopy. So that was a great idea, and uh, what I decided to do was use these long screws that I just got with the, uh, the B-Core board. But on each side, I put the standoff in the little groove in the board, and I made a hole in the plastic with a needle, and then screwed through into the carbon fiber frame. So the carbon fiber frame, that's the rake on heli frame, or rack on a heli, I forget which it is. But uh, yeah, it accepts the screws, actually screws right into it. So now that canopy is held down, and also the board is on a little spongy standoff, which is nice to keep it level. So that was a great idea. I couldn't get one in the back here. Uh, it's, it'd be difficult, <laughs> to say the least. It isn't made to accept one on that uh, Craze Pony canopy. And in the front, the camera was in the way. I could get one in, but I felt like the two on the sides were enough, and it would be easy to remove those screws if I need to get in there and do something like program the board. So after the uh, upgraded board, it's still weighs 22 grams. I think that's what it weighed before. Might have been between 22 and 23, but it's still very light. Now for the next video, part four, we're going to finish up by showing how to configure clean flight for the Tiny Whoop and also configure the FreeSky Tyrannus X90 radio and the settings that need to be done in that so that we can fly the Tiny Whoop and then we'll give it a short test flight. See you next time. Here,